Welcome back to Men and the City. In today's video, we're gonna pose a question. Where are all the men? Now, as many of you know, over the last several years, I have traveled all over the world. I have been to Asia, I've been to Europe, I've been across the United States. And one of the things that I notice, and if you notice the same thing, post in the comments below. I have noticed a tremendous disparity of far more women than men. I've seen it in Vienna, Austria. I saw it in Paris, France. I saw it in Bangkok. Now, interestingly enough, in 2019, I was in Bangkok and I was out on a date with a, a local Thai girl and she started in on a conversation regarding the obvious uh, bloated numbers of females relative to males in Thailand. And her thought at the time was that it was dietary changes or it was estrogen in the water supply, uh, maybe it was the use of plastics. These are all reasons that are sometimes mentioned um, by content creators to explain a drop in testosterone levels and conceivably explain why there might be more females than males. This is, I think, a spring-loaded disequilibrium that is going to be the pretext for a discussion about masculinity today. So, I want to start with a Zero Hedge article that talked about a bulge in youthful unemployment. And I'm going to show this on the screen. So one of the things you're going to notice in the graphic you can see before you is that there is an explosion of unemployment amongst folks between the ages of 16 and 25. Now it's more pronounced in the developing world than it is in the developed world, but it's growing everywhere. And in a country like the UK, as an example, it's almost 12%. Well, what's noteworthy about this report is that there is a gender disparity in the social economic unemployment. And that is that far more men are unemployed than women. And they cite some examples, as you can see on the screen, Slovakia, Finland, the UK, Lithuania, so forth and so on. Now, Zero Hedge argues that this is um, probably attributable to the fact that there are more jobs in healthcare and social welfare, and those are jobs that men tend to do less than women. It's also affected by uh, a deindustrialization in the Western world. Whatever the case may be, um, what's particularly noteworthy is that men, disproportionately from women, are feeling these effects. Now, I also came across an interesting article in the National Review that is more right than left, you might say, on the political spectrum. But listen to their account of youthful unemployment because they add an interesting spin on it. Um, in their retiring desire to work, men distinguish themselves from women. In July, relative to the month before, the number of men not in the labor force because they don't want a job increased by 122,000. This is part of a well-documented downtrend in the labor market outcomes of the American male. Men are choosing to leave work behind, not because work is leaving men behind. The reason why a growing number of men are making that choice becomes the question. And if you're a supporter of free market principles and capitalism, there is no self-evident answer. Well, listen to this next part, because I think this is, this is a, an interesting expression of the cognitive dissonance between the elites or the mainstream and what's really going on. I say in the pages of Playboy magazine, um, men have been fantasizing about liberation from the bondage of breadwinning since at least the 1960s. In the 1990s, that fantasy took the form of blockbuster films like Fight Club. Many of Fight Club's members, all men, ultimately quit their jobs to live off of the proceeds that its leader, Tyler Durden, secures by blackmailing a corporate executive. This fantasy is not new. What's new is the number of men who are actually living it out. And then uh, National Review concludes, America's men, these latest jobs reports confirms, are leaving the labor force like their members of the Fight Club. 
That is more or less a distillation of the way the mainstream is digesting this data, this very explosive data showing a bifurcation of employed women versus employed men. And no doubt that plays a big role in why there are a decreasing number of men in major cities across the world, especially in the West. Well, here's another accounting from an essay that I wrote uh, several months ago called Global Reset and Neo-Masculinity. Men in the city are awakening to a traumatized world. The financial economic order led by a corrupt global elite is spiraling out of control. Legacy structures from banks to universities are in steep decline. Intergender relationships are breaking down. The nine to five paradigm is unstable and old value systems are fading. Fear of impending social quakes is spreading through the corridors of power as generations of frustrated, voiceless, and disillusioned young men are beginning to mutiny against a corrosive system grinding them down to dust. Amidst such upheaval, a neo-masculinity is rising from the ashes of a society teetering on the edge of chaos. These are two diametrically opposed accounts of what's actually happening. And note that the mainstream view, while they are paying attention to some degree, and remember that the unemployment numbers are almost certainly understating the issue in the Western world, while they're somewhat aware of it, it befuddles them. There, there's no real understanding of why these men are non-participants, in some cases in a voluntary fashion. And National Review's explanation is that men don't want to be breadwinners, which is patently absurd. What's more the case? What, what is really going on, as most of you watching know, is that men are beginning to revolt against a legacy structure that no longer values them, that in many cases regards men and masculinity as a total anachronism, something that automation renders no longer useful. And so the future is female. And these mainstream pundits and talking heads think that that's an explanation for why men are not in the labor force. This is an egregious case of cognitive dissonance. Ladies and gentlemen, neo-masculinity, as I've said on this channel many times, is a revolt, but it's also a recognition that we're leaving an age of prosperity, of uh, an age of abundance, and we're going into an age of scarcity, a reorganization of economies, of political systems, and so forth, is in our midst. We are in this transition already, and men are leaving the labor force because they don't want to be part of a society that's so destructive both to them, but also to women. They just recognize it more so than not. We are headed for a global fight club, a resistance that's global to an order that just doesn't work anymore. And Zero Hedge correctly notes in their uh, piece on this bulge of youthful unemployment that that is almost always a sign or an indicator that you're going to get social unrest as a result. This is where the neo-masculine movement is headed, and this speaks to this, this revolt, this underlying undergrowth, if you will, of social power moving against a system that doesn't work anymore. Stay tuned for more, and we'll talk soon. Thank you.